The corded ware culture German, Schnurkeramik, French, Ceramic Corde, Dutch, Tubikerkultur comprises a broad archaeological horizon of Europe between c. 2900 BCE, circa 2350 BCE, thus from the Late Neolithic, through the Copper Age, and ending in the Early Bronze Age. Corded ware culture encompassed a vast area, from the Rhine on the west to the Volga in the east, occupying parts of Northern Europe, Central Europe, and Eastern Europe. According to Hawk et al., 2017, the Corded ware people were genetically closely related to the people of the Yamna culture, or Yamnaya, documenting a massive migration into the heartland of Europe from its eastern periphery. The Eurasiatic steppes. The corded ware culture may have disseminated the Proto-Germanic and Proto-Balto-Slavic Indo-European languages. The corded ware culture also shows genetic affinity with the later Sintashta culture, where the Proto-Indo-Iranian language may have originated. <laughs> Nomenclature The term corded ware culture German, Schnurkeramik Kultur, Dutch, Tubikerkultur, French, Ceramique Corde was first introduced by the German archaeologist Friedrich Klofleisch in 1883. He named it after cord-like impressions or ornamentation characteristic of its pottery. The term single grave culture comes from its burial custom, which consisted of inhumation under tumuli in a crouched position with various artifacts. Battle axe culture, or boat axe culture, is named from its characteristic grave offering to males, a stone boat shaped battle axe. Geography Corded ware encompassed most of continental northern Europe from the Rhine on the west to the Volga in the east, including most of modern-day Germany, the Netherlands, Denmark, Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Belarus, Czech Republic, Austria, Hungary, Slovakia, Switzerland, northwestern Romania, northern Ukraine, and the European part of Russia, as well as coastal Norway and the southern portions of Sweden and Finland. In the late Enneolithic, early Bronze Age, it encompassed the territory of nearly the entire Balkan Peninsula, where corded ware mixed with other steppe elements. Archaeologists note that corded ware was not a unified culture, as corded ware groups inhabiting a vast geographical area from the Rhine to Volga seem to have regionally specific subsistence strategies and economies. 226 There are differences in the material culture and in settlements and society. At the same time, they had several shared elements that are characteristic of all corded ware groups, such as their burial practices, pottery with cord decoration and unique stone axes. The contemporary beaker culture overlapped with the western extremity of this culture, west of the Elbe, and may have contributed to the pan-European spread of that culture. Although a similar social organization and settlement pattern to the beaker were adopted, the corded ware group lacked the new refinements made possible through trade and communication by sea and rivers. <laughs> Relation to Indo-European speaking groups <laughs> <laughs> Origins The origins and dispersal of corded ware culture is one of the pivotal unresolved issues of the Indo-European or Heimat problem. The corded ware culture has long been regarded as Indo-European because of its relative lack of settlements compared to preceding cultures, which suggested a mobile, pastoral economy, similar to that of the Yamna culture, and the culture of the Indo-Europeans inferred from philology. Its wide area of distribution indicates rapid expansion at the assumed time of the dispersal of Indo-European languages. Indeed, the corded ware culture was once presumed to be the Urheimat of the Proto-Indo-Europeans based on their possession of the horse and wheeled vehicles, apparent warlike propensities, wide area of distribution and rapid intrusive expansion at the assumed time of the dispersal of Indo-European languages. Today this idea has lost currency, as the Kurgan hypothesis is currently the most widely accepted proposal to explain the origins and spread of the Indo-European languages. There is a stark division between archaeologists regarding the origins of corded ware. Some archaeologists believed it sprang from Central Europe while others saw an influence from nomadic pastoral societies of the steppes. In favor of the first view was the fact that corded ware coincides considerably with the earlier north-central European funnelbeaker culture TRB. According to Gimbutas, the corded ware culture was preceded by the globular amphora culture 3400-2800 BCE, which she regarded to be an Indo-European culture. 
The globular amphora culture stretched from Central Europe to the Baltic Sea, and emerged from the Funnelbeaker culture. However, in other regions corded ware appears to herald a new culture and physical type. On most of the immense, continental expanse that it covered, the culture was clearly intrusive, and therefore represents one of the most impressive and revolutionary cultural changes attested by archaeology. The degree to which cultural change generally represents immigration was a matter of debate, and such debate had figured strongly in discussions of corded ware. According to controversial radiocarbon dates, corded ware ceramic forms in single graves develop earlier in the area that is now Poland than in western and southern central Europe. The earliest radiocarbon dates for corded ware indeed come from Kujawi and Lesser Poland in central and southern Poland and point to the period around 3000 BCE. However, subsequent review has challenged this perspective, instead pointing out that the wide variation in dating of the corded ware, especially the dating of the culture's beginning, is based on individual outlier graves, is not particularly in line with other archaeological data and runs afoul of plateaus in the radiocarbon calibration curve, in the one case where the dating can be clarified with dendrochronology. In Switzerland, corded ware is found for only a short period from 2750 BCE to 2400 BCE. Furthermore, because the short period in Switzerland seems to represent examples of artifacts from all the major sub-periods of the corded ware culture elsewhere, some researchers conclude that corded ware appeared more or less simultaneously throughout north-central Europe approximately in the early 29th century BCE around 2900 BCE, in a number of centers which subsequently formed their own local networks. 297 carbon-14 dating of the remaining Central European regions shows that corded ware appeared after 2880 BCE. According to this theory, it spread to the Lüneburg Heath and then further to the North European plain, Rhineland, Switzerland, Scandinavia, the Baltic region and Russia to Moscow, where the culture met with the pastoralists considered indigenous to the steppes. Recent paleogenomic data show that samples of the corded ware population from CA 2400 BCE were genetically at least 75% similar to the Yamna population of the steppes, suggesting massive migrations from the steppes as a source for the corded ware culture. While honoring the possibilities of genetic research, this interpretation has been questioned by archaeologists as being too simple, as it ignores the complex processes involved in archaeological explanations. In the western regions the transition to corded ware has been proposed to be a quick, smooth and internal change that occurred at the preceding Funnelbeaker culture, having its origin in the direction of eastern Germany. Whereas in the area of the present Baltic states and northeast of Poland, it is seen as an intrusive successor to the southwestern portion of the Narva culture. However, today corded ware is now everywhere seen as intrusive, though not necessarily aggressively so, and coexisting with earlier indigenous cultures in many cases. Topic genetic studies Relation with Yamna culture A genetic study conducted by Hawk et al. 2015 found that a large proportion of the ancestry of the corded ware culture's population is similar to the Yamna culture, tracing the corded ware culture's origins to migrations of the Yamna from the steppes 4,500 years ago. About 75% of the DNA of late Neolithic corded ware skeletons found in Germany was a precise match to DNA from individuals of the Yamna culture. The same study estimated a 40-54% ancestral contribution of the Yamna in the DNA of modern Central and Northern Europeans, and a 20-32% contribution in modern Southern Europeans, excluding Sardinians 7.1% or less, and to a lesser extent Sicilians 11.6% or less. Hawk et al. also note that their results suggest that haplogroups R1b and R1a spread into Europe from the east after 3000 BCE, five in terms of phenotypes. Wild et al. 2014 and Hawk et al. 2015 found that the intrusive Yamna population, generally inferred to be the first speakers of an Indo-European language in the corded ware culture zone, were overwhelmingly dark-eyed brown, dark-haired and had a skin color that was moderately light, though somewhat darker than that of the average modern European. These studies also showed that light pigmentation traits had already existed in pre-Indo-European Neolithic Europeans in both farmers and hunter-gatherers, so long-standing philological attempts to correlate them with the arrival of Indo-Europeans from the steppes were misguided. Autosomal DNA tests also indicate that the Yamna migration from the steppes introduced a component of ancestry referred to as ancient North Eurasian admixture into Europe. 
Ancient North Eurasian is the name given in genetic literature to a component that represents descent from the people of the Malthaburet culture or a population closely related to them. The ancient North Eurasian genetic component is visible in tests of the Yamna people as well as modern-day Europeans, but not of Western or Central Europeans predating the Corded Ware culture. Hawk et al. 2015 also warned, we caution that the sampled Yamna individuals from Samara might not be directly ancestral to Corded Ware individuals from Germany. It is possible that a more western Yamna population, or an earlier pre -Yamna steppe population may have migrated into Central Europe, and future work may uncover more missing links in the chain of transmission of steppe ancestry. Goldberg et al. 2016 found that Neolithic farming migration into Europe was driven by mass migration of both males and females in roughly equal numbers, perhaps whole families, while Bronze Age Pontic steppe migration and cultural shift were instead driven by male migration, potentially connected to new technology and conquest. Influence on Sintashta culture. Furthermore, Allentoft et al. 2015 has presented surprising evidence of genetic affinity of the Corded Ware culture with the later Sintashta culture, suggesting that the Western or European Neolithic component of Sintashta and its daughter cultures may have come from the Corded Ware culture. Topic: <laughs> Formation of the Indo-European languages in Europe. West European Indo-European languages the Corded Ware culture may have played a central role in the spread of the Indo-European languages in Europe during the Copper and Bronze Ages. According to Mallory, the Corded Ware culture may have been the common prehistoric ancestor of the later Celtic, Germanic, Baltic, Slavic, and possibly some of the Indo-European languages of Italy. Yet, Mallory also notes that the Corded Ware can not account for Greek, Illyrian, Thracian and East Italic, which may be derived from Southeast Europe. According to Anthony, the Corded Ware horizon may have introduced Germanic, Baltic, and Slavic into Northern Europe. According to Anthony, the pre Germanic dialects may have developed in the USA Tovo culture in southeastern Central Europe between the Dniestr and the Vistula between c. 3100 and 2800 BCE, and spread with the Corded Ware culture. Between 3100 and 2800 2600 BCE, a real folk migration of Proto Indo European speakers from the Yamna culture took place into the Danube Valley, which eventually reached as far as Hungary, where pre Celtic and pre Italic may have developed. Slavic and Baltic developed at the middle Dniepr. Present day Ukraine. Hawk et al. 2015 note that German courted where trace approximately 75% of their ancestry to the Yamna envisioning a west-northwest migration from the Yamna culture into Germany. Allentoft et al. 2015 envision a migration from the Yamna culture towards northwestern Europe via Central Europe, and towards the Baltic area and the eastern periphery of the Corded Ware culture via the territory of present-day Ukraine, Belarus and Russia. Language shift According to Gimbuta's original theory, the process of Indo-Europeanization of Corded Ware and, later, the rest of Europe, was essentially a cultural transformation, not one of physical type. The Yamna migration from Eastern to Central and Western Europe is understood by Gimbutas as a military victory, resulting in the Yamna imposing a new administrative system, language and religion upon the indigenous groups. The social organization greatly facilitated the Yamna people's effectiveness in war, their patrilineal and patriarchal structure. The old Europeans indigenous groups had neither a warrior class nor horses. They lived in probably theocratic monarchies presided over by a queen priestess or were egalitarian societies. This old European social structure contrasted with the social structure of the Yamna derived cultures that followed them. David Anthony 2007 in his Revised Steppe Hypothesis proposes that the spread of the Indo-European languages probably did not happen through chain type folk migrations but by the introduction of these languages by ritual and political elites which were emulated by large groups of people a process which he calls elite recruitment 117 to 8 yet in supplementary information to hawk et al 2015 anthony together with lazaridis hawk patterson and reich notes that the mass migration of yamna people to northern europe shows that the steppe hypothesis does not require elite dominance to have transmitted Indo-European languages into Europe. Instead, our results show that the languages could have been introduced simply by strength of numbers, via major migration in which both sexes participated. 
Linguist Gus Krunen points out that speakers of Indo-European languages encountered existing populations in Europe that spoke unrelated, non-Indo-European languages when they migrated further into Europe from the Yamna culture's steppe zone at the margin of Europe. He focuses on both the effects on Indo-European languages that resulted from this contact and investigation of the pre-existing languages. Relatively little is known about the pre-Indo-European linguistic landscape of Europe, except for Basque, as the Indo-Europeanization of Europe caused a largely unrecorded, massive linguistic extinction event, most likely through language shift. Krunin's 2015 study purports to show that pre-Indo-European speech contains a clear Neolithic signature emanating from the Aegean language family and thus patterns with the prehistoric migration of Europe's first farming populations. Ten Maria Gimbutas, as part of her theory, had already inferred that the Corded Ware culture's intrusion into Scandinavia formed a synthesis with the indigenous people of the Funnelbeaker culture, giving birth to the Proto-Germanic language. According to Edgar Polame, 30% of the non-Indo-European substratum found in modern German derives from non-Indo-European speakers of Funnelbeaker culture, indigenous to southern Scandinavia. When Yamna Indo-European speakers came into contact with the indigenous peoples during the 3rd millennium BCE, they came to dominate the local populations yet parts of the indigenous lexicon persisted in the formation of Proto-Germanic, thus giving Proto-Germanic the status of being an Indo-Europeanized language. Language continuity in opposition to the invasionist theories proposed by Gimbutas and others, Mario Alané, in his Paleolithic Continuity Theory, has supported the continuity of languages in the area of the Corded Ware as elsewhere in Europe since the Paleolithic. Based on predecessors such as Yevgeny U. Krzyzewski and V. Gordon Child, he stressed the universal character of the innovations generally connected to the people of the Corded Ware such as a special mixture of farming and nomadic pastoralism, and the patrilineal and patriarchal structures connected to the latter. Nevertheless, Alanay accepted a heightened influence of the migratorial element in the area between the Black Sea and the Pannonian Basin, but emphasized the continuity, with or without human appositions from the steppes of the Funnelbeaker culture via the globular amphora culture to the corded ware or battle axe culture, and the single grave culture. He believes that speakers of Baltic languages may have played an important role in the diffusion of the corded ware culture. The main arguments for this pivotal role of the Baltic speakers would be the geographical extent of the Baltic hydronymy in a rectangle spanning from the Vistula to the Russian Oka and the Upper Volga, the linguistic influence of the Baltic languages in and onto a regional Sprachbund, characterized by polytoneth ladder trait unites them with most of the Scandinavian and some low German dialects of the coastal region, as well as with certain Slavic Northern Kashubian and Finnic languages Livonian and Estonian. Economy. There are very few discovered settlements, which led to the traditional view of this culture as exclusively nomadic pastoralists. However, this view was modified, as some evidence of sedentary farming emerged. Traces of emmer, common wheat and barley were found at a corded ware site at Bronisys in southeast Poland. Wheeled vehicles presumably drawn by oxen are in evidence, a continuation from the Funnelbeaker culture era. Cow's milk was used systematically from 3400 BCE onwards in the northern Alpine foreland. Sheep were kept more frequently in the western part of Switzerland due to the stronger Mediterranean influence. Changes in slaughter age and animal size are possibly evidence for sheep being kept for their wool at corded ware sites in this region. Topic. Graves Burial occurred in flat graves or below small tumuli in a flexed position, on the continent males lay on their right side, females on the left, with the faces of both oriented to the south. However, in Sweden and also parts of northern Poland the graves were oriented north-south, men lay on their left side and women on the right side, both facing east. Originally, there was probably a wooden construction, since the graves are often positioned in a line. This is in contrast with practices in Denmark where the dead were buried below small mounds with a vertical stratigraphy, the oldest below the ground, the second above this grave, and occasionally even a third burial above those. Other types of burials are the niche graves of Poland. Grave goods for men typically included a stone battle axe. Pottery in the shape of beakers and other types are the most common burial gifts, generally speaking. These were often decorated with cord, sometimes with incisions and other types of impressions. 
The approximately contemporary Beaker culture had similar burial traditions, and together they covered most of Western and Central Europe. The Beaker culture originated around 2800 BCE in the Iberian Peninsula and subsequently extended into Central Europe, where it partly coexisted with the Corded Ware region. In April 2011, it was reported that a deviant Corded Ware burial had been discovered in a suburb of Prague. The remains, believed to be male, were orientated in the same way as women's burials and were not accompanied by any gender-specific grave goods. The excavators suggested the grave may have been that of a member of a so-called third gender, which were people either with different sexual orientation or transsexuals or just people who identified themselves differently from the rest of the society." While media reports heralded the discovery of the world's first gay caveman, archaeologists and biological anthropologists criticized media coverage as sensationalist. If this burial represents a transgendered individual as well it could, that doesn't necessarily mean the person had a different sexual orientation and certainly doesn't mean that he would have considered himself or that his culture would have considered him homosexual. Anthropologist Christina Kilgrove commented, Other items of criticism were that someone buried in the Copper Age was not a caveman, and that identifying the sex of skeletal remains is difficult and inexact. A detailed account of the burial has not yet appeared in scientific literature. Subgroups Corded ware culture The prototypal corded ware culture, German Schnurkeramikultur, is found in Central Europe, mainly Germany and Poland, and refers to the characteristic pottery of the era. Twisted cord was impressed into the wet clay to create various decorative patterns and motifs. It is known mostly from its burials, and both sexes received the characteristic cord decorated pottery. Whether made of flax or hemp, they had rope. Topic: Single grave culture. Single grave term refers to a series of late Neolithic communities of the 3rd millennium BCE living in southern Scandinavia, northern Germany, and the Low Countries that share the practice of single burial, the deceased usually being accompanied by a battle axe, amber beads, and pottery vessels. The term single grave culture was first introduced by the Danish archaeologist Andreas Peter Madsen in the late 1800s. He found single graves to be quite different from the already known dolmens, long barrows, and passage graves. In 1898, archaeologist Sophus Muller was first to present a migration hypothesis stating that previously known dolmens, long barrows, passage graves and newly discovered single graves may represent two completely different groups of people, stating, "...single graves are traces of new, from the south coming tribes." The cultural emphasis on drinking equipment already characteristic of the early indigenous funnelbeaker culture, synthesized with newly arrived corded ware traditions. Especially in the West, Scandinavia and Northern Germany, the drinking vessels have a protruding foot and define the protruding foot beaker culture (PFB) as a subset of the single grave culture. The beaker culture has been proposed to derive from this specific branch of the corded ware culture. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Swedish-Norwegian battle axe culture. The Swedish-Norwegian battle axe culture, or the boat axe culture, appeared ca. 2800 BCE and is known from about 3000 graves from Scania to Upland and Trondelag. The battle axes were primarily a status object. There are strong continuities in stone craft traditions, and very little evidence of any type of full-scale migration, least of all a violent one. The old ways were discontinued as the corresponding cultures on the continent changed, and the farmers living in Scandinavia took part in those changes since they belonged to the same network. Settlements on small, separate farmsteads without any defensive protection is also a strong argument against the people living there being aggressors. About 3,000 battle axes have been found, in sites distributed over all of Scandinavia, but they are sparse in Norland and northern Norway. Less than 100 settlements are known, and their remains are negligible as they are located on continually used farmland, and have consequently been plowed away. Ina Ostmo reports sites inside the Arctic Circle in the Lofoten, and as far north as the present city of Tromso. 
The Swedish Norwegian battle axe culture was based on the same agricultural practices as the previous Funnelbeaker culture, but the appearance of metal changed the social system. This is marked by the fact that the Funnelbeaker culture had collective megalithic graves with a great deal of sacrifices to the graves, but the battle axe culture has individual graves with individual sacrifices. A new aspect was given to the culture in 1993, when a death house in Turinge, in Södermanland was excavated. Along the once heavily timbered walls were found the remains of about 20 clay vessels, six work axes and a battle axe, which all came from the last period of the culture. There were also the cremated remains of at least six people. This is the earliest find of cremation in Scandinavia and it shows close contacts with Central Europe. In the context of the entry of Germanic into the region, Ina Ostmo emphasizes that the Atlantic and North Sea coastal regions of Scandinavia, and the Circum-Baltic areas were united by a vigorous maritime economy, permitting a far wider geographical spread and a closer cultural unity than interior continental cultures could attain. He points to the widely disseminated number of rock carvings assigned to this era, which display thousands of ships. To seafaring cultures like this one, the sea is a highway and not a divider. <laughs> <laughs> Finnish battle axe culture The Finnish battle axe culture was a mixed cattle breeder and hunter-gatherer culture, and one of the few in this horizon to provide rich finds from settlements. Topic. Middle Dnieper and Fatyanovo Balanovo cultures The eastern outposts of the Corded Ware culture are the Middle Dnieper culture and on the upper Volga, the Fatyanovo Balanovo culture. The Middle Dnieper culture has very scant remains, but occupies the easiest route into central and northern Europe from the steppe. If the association of battle axe cultures with Indo-European languages is correct, then Fatyanovo would be a culture with an Indo-European superstratum over a Uralic substratum, and may account for some of the linguistic borrowings identified in the Indo-Uralic thesis. However, according to Hakkinen, the Uralic Indo-European contacts only start in the Corded Ware period and the Uralic expansion into the Upper Volga region post-dates it. Hakkinen accepts Fatyanovo Balanovo as an early Indo European culture, but maintains that their substratum identified with the Volosovo culture was neither Uralic nor Indo European. Genetics seems to support Hakkinen. See also Funnelbeaker culture, Fatyanovo Balanovo culture, Middle Dnieper culture, Beaker culture Mjolnir Yuko Urtaboye culture Topic. External links Gibbons, Anne the 10th of June 2015. Nomadic herders left a strong genetic mark on Europeans and Asians. Science. AAAS Topic. Notes Topic. References Topic. Sources <references>